Hey everybody, Merry Christmas. I'm Jonathan Bennett and I am joined by my magnificent, hunky and handsome co-star, George Krissa. Hello, George. Hello. Hello, Hi, George. Do you know what we call him? We, we call him Gorgeous Georges. And if you guys want to call him Gorgeous Georges, you can too. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> uh, we are so excited to talk to you about our new movie, The Holiday Sitter, as part of the countdown to Christmas this year. We have a couple of questions that Hallmark has sent us, and we're going to be answering them. Now, something we're doing this time that I've never done before because I wanted to try it is I haven't looked at these questions ahead of time at all. So as we read them, this will be the first time I've ever read them. Oh, that's very fun. I don't like when we would go to set, George. I and, I look <laughs> and sometimes I'd walk in and I'd be like, what scene are we shooting? Yeah, and, and you'd say, um, these are my lines. And i say, no, that's what we're doing tomorrow. And you go, oh. Oh, what are we saying today? And George, like, just stand there and look pretty. I'm like, got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, that's fine. Here we go. Ready, George? Yes. Well, in the holiday sitter, this is the questions I'm reading to you. In the holiday sitter, my character Sam is all set up for a Hawaiian vacation when his sister needs his help. What brings about his Christmas change of plans? Sam. Wait, am I asking you this as like a question to see if you read the script? Yeah, I was like, that sounds like a like a trivia question. I kind of like it. So why um, why what brings about um my change of plans, George? Let's see if you read it. Well, I I mean, I read my parts. <laughs> this is how George reads the script. Blah 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 blah. My line. Blah 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 blah. My line. Blah 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 blah. My line. Um. That's how I'm gonna watch it too. I'm just gonna DVR it. Yeah, so just fast can... forward through my parts. Great. Good. Yeah, good. I do that to you anyway. It's fine. Um, what? Wait. What? What brings about the change of plans? Okay, so the change of plans happens when um, Sam's sister needs an emergency babysitter because they're gonna go pick up um, their newly um, born adopted daughter. 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 Yeah. And that's exactly um, what happens. And. Yeah. She calls me and ropes me into babysitting. Correct. And so I have to cancel my plans to Hawaii and go home to watch my niece and nephew, who I haven't seen in like over five years. And I am it's I think it's important to note too that like I was the last person on the list of people that they could call to babysit. Like I'm the dead last choice. Like they're like, we will let anybody else watch our kids except Sam. And then they couldn't find anyone, so they call me. But it's always fun to be a last resort. Yeah, it's, like, you know, it's very similar to the casting process. Yeah. Like we went through every actor, and they're like, I guess we'll get George. I have a question for you now. Go, George. <laughs> okay, so I play Jason, Sam's yeah. sister. So far, you're doing great. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he and Sam have an adorable meet cute. Can we tease a little more about how their paths cross? Yeah, we can. We have a meet cute. For those of you watching, you're all Hallmark fans, so you understand the meet cute of it all. And our meet cute is very cute because, uh, well. Because we meet. <laughs> we meet cutely. Um, <laughs> Tell them about it. I, I or is this my answer? This is your answer. I'm oh. asking you this question. Okay. Um, we meet because I go to a house and I knock on the door and something happens and I fall backwards and George, with his giant shoulders, is there to catch <laughs> me so I don't fall. And it's one of the most classic tropes in rom-com history is the falling and the catching of someone for them to meet. But I just love it because it always works and it's always funny. And I thought what was so cool is that this is the first time that a boy is falling into another boy and he's catching them. And so I thought it was like, we have to do like one of the classic rom-com tropes because it's two dudes. So that was really, really cool. And then we meet cute. And uh, by the way, you're, the lighting in that scene way better on you than it was on me. 
When I watched it back, you glowing. Me, I had this for some reason. I well, feel why like... are you doing that to your eyes? What? Then why are you doing that to your eyes? It was a character choice. <laughs> and I was like, hey, nice to meet you, Jason. Um, <laughs> Sam has many talents and can manage his high-powered clients. Okay. Uh -huh. He is not a great babysitter. Jason is a successful contractor and is great with kids. So see what we're doing here, guys? Sam, bad with kids. Jason, great with kids. Fish out of water. Yay. How does Jason end up helping Sam with his uncle duties or gunkle duties? Well, how do you help me? What are some of the duties you help me with, George? Well, um, for uh, breakfast, I help you make a lovely yeah. vegan pancake. Um, but I have to, I happen to throw a little extra sparkle in there and make them Christmas pancakes. And um, Sam, for whatever reason, finds that um, terribly impressive. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> but it's cute. they're very, very sweet um, Christmas pancakes. And um, what else do I help you do? I help you look after the kids. I help you um, maintain the schedule. I help you. The schedule. Mm -hmm. The schedule. Um, You're really good at that. It's good. Yeah. In, in my own life, not so much, but in the movie, I was very good at it. <laughs> George, in real life, eat. Uh, we were talking about the pancakes. Uh -huh. The Christmas pancakes, what you make, like the key to my heart always is food, but the key to George's heart really is food. I have never, everyone, ladies and gentlemen watching at home right now, I have done nine Hallmark movies. I have done probably 70 other movies. In my life, on set, I have never, ever met someone that ate more food than George Crissa. I don't know where it goes. He has like, he looks like The Rock. <laughs> and like, he will literally just eat more candy and just junk food and chips than I've ever seen anyone eat in my entire life. I don't know how you do it. They were Christmas chips. Even though it was all, what? they were Christmas chips. The, oh, right. That's it. That makes sense. Yeah, they were Christmas chips. Because it's um, holidays. <laughs> yeah. You know, we shot this in like July, right? It was the holidays though. Yeah, yeah. Holiday. Yeah. Christmas in July. And I had to have two lunches because I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the record, he's not joking. I'm two, it's not two. <laughs> two. And like, I'm like trying not to eat like a potato chip because I'm like, oh, I look fat like this. My skin, my my face looks puffy. Like, and he's just like, oh, no. like, like literally would have, he would have Cheetos in his chest hair because he would be eating them on set like this, like laying in his trailer. And then he'd get up and I'd look and there'd be little <laughs> chips. I'm like, you have chips on your chest. It's that's mostly an exaggeration, but not too much. <laughs> there are so many funny moments as Sam isn't the most coordinated. Whether it's tripping on a Christmas tree or almost burning down the house with an omelet, which you did, what was it like getting to do so much physical comedy? You know, it's funny because people say a lot of times that I love physical comedy, but I don't really agree with that. Oh no, is he okay? <laughs> I'm not really into physical comedy, really. Um, hi. Anything for a bit, right? <laughs> Anything for a bit. You know, I grew up watching the 80s and 90s comedies that were just such, like Christmas Vacation is my favorite movie. Like anything with giant, big, broad physical comedy is my favorite thing to do. It's a dream come true when I get to do it on set. It literally is why I'm an actor. And getting to do that every day and like just fall around the set, pull down the Christmas tree. There's a scene where George and I, I just hit my wedding ring on the glass. I think I just broke my table. Um, there's a scene where George and I are walking and I just fall out of frame. And it was my, I think it was one of my favorite things to shoot in the movie just because it's so stupid. 
And I think the dumber we look and the stupider I can be and the more I can just throw myself around the set and get people to laugh at it, like, I felt like a Christmas clown. And I have to say, it was so fun to watch and like watching, because I, I would watch you um, with everyone at the monitor while you were doing your bits. And it was always different because you'd always like try something new. And I knew it was um, going to be a keeper, like or something was going to be really good when um, we'd be watching and then everyone behind the monitor would go <laughs> and try not to laugh so they wouldn't ruin it. <laughs> That's then like, okay, we got it. That's the take. Yeah, and, and sometimes it does work. And, you know, it's really, when you're doing comedies like this, it's, you have to have, you have to be brave, right? Because you have to go on set every day and just be like, look, what I learned and what I love working with George Crissa, like he's the, I mean, he's a school of acting is George Crissa. Like watching him work, it's like watching acting class because he's so good. He comes from a giant theater background doing giant musicals in Stratford and Canada. And like, he comes from these giant comedy and theater background, but working with him because he's a theater person, because we kind of just gelled immediately, we had this really safe place to like go for the jokes in each scene and nine times out of 10, they wouldn't work. And that, but, but that's okay because when they, the 10th time when we would do it and it would hit, it was gold and like you have to really have a safe space to like do that and be like vulnerable all day and say okay i'm gonna try this joke it might work it might not because when it doesn't work it is the quietest sound you've ever heard <laughs> like when you do a joke and no one laughs and it's just like they're still rolling and you're just like oh my gosh <laughs> but oh. that was so fun it's like no one was afraid to look stupid no right. one like anybody in the whole like in uh, the whole thing was just like yeah. willing to go for it. And it was just so much fun. Yeah. See, I mean, look at George is doing it right now. He's not afraid to look stupid. So See? stupid. Look, this is a perfect example. <laughs> My question, Sam and George are both generous with their time and are happy to help their nieces and nephews. What are some of our favorite qualities about each of our characters? What's some uh, of your favorite qualities about Jason, George? Well, actually, my favorite qualities about Jason are, um, He's very family oriented, oriented, and um, he he um, builds his life around his his family and his connections, and I love that because it's um, it's something that I think often gets lost in like the grand scheme of of life. It's like the connection with those around you, especially when you know things seem to get away from you and um so yeah i think that's the, the the best thing and that he's like starting a family on his own terms what about you fantastic what are your favorite qualities about my character smiling what else he's tall <laughs> <laughs> no right, um, next question sam, okay <laughs> no sam is so funny um sam is um you know, he's also a family guy, but he doesn't really realize it until he goes home. Um, he's so like we we find out that we have that kind of that that family thing in common. Which I think we have common. something in common. Our characters have something in common. Yes. George and Jonathan, nothing. Nothing. But characters, full out. Yeah, it's written down for us. <laughs> oh I think it's also fun to watch Jason and Sam. I think it's fun to watch Jason teach Sam about family and what it means. And I think when people watch this, you're going to have this moment where you see this chosen family coming together, not just Sam and Jason, but Kathleen and Nate, you know, Chelsea Hobbs and, and Matthew who play my sister and brother-in-law. Like there's so many moments where chosen family are really coming together and I think everyone's going to be able to identify with that because we all have our chosen family, whether it be our biological family or a mixture of both. There's, we have a chosen family, whether it's friends, family, whatever that it may be to everyone, but they'll be able to identify with that. So I think that's really fun. I have to ask you a question. Yes. Okay. Sam and Jason have different ideas in the future. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sam and Jason, Jason have different ideas for the future. 
but in the present, they make a great team. Can we share any fun stories from working together? Well, I feel like we've been doing that. Yeah, we. what are our fun stories from working together? Uh, other than the fact that George eats more than anything I've ever seen in my whole life. Like my real life husband, I thought was the biggest pig in the world. Like he eats more, like he'll eat all day. I'm like, where does it go? He just is always hungry. George tops that. Um, so other than George eating all day on set, what are some funny moments? Um, well, I thought it was really fun. Honestly, like this might be a cop-out answer, but I had literally the best time all day, every day. I like, I couldn't wait to go to work because I was having such a good time. I just, I didn't stop laughing. Um, so um, I think, yeah, so, but a funny story. Um, I well, think that, well, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say watching you do, you do a pratfall in our, our, our one walk around scene and you, did it like eight times. And it was just fun to watch you like hit the ground in so many different ways that um, I was like, it's just really fun to watch. Cause you it go hit okay. the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did we get it? <laughs> I think it was, I think my favorite line in that one too, when I'm like that shrub came out of nowhere and you're like, oh, you have an inner ear disorder. And I'm like, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. It's so stupid. Like we're walking and I just fall out of frame. It's so dumb and I love it. Um, I think something that, I mean, look, this movie is so good. It is, I will say this, I've done this for a very long time. I know. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, George. Gosh. Um, I know I may only look like I've been doing this a few years, but I've done this a very long time. And of every movie I've ever made, this is the one that means the most to me and is my absolute favorite of all the movies I've ever made in my entire career. And so I think what was so fun is because we knew what we were doing, we were doing this really fun movie that was you know, an LGBTQ plus led rom-com at Christmas. And we were having so much fun with it. And every day it was just such an exciting place to go to work because there was this kinetic energy on set of everyone was like, oh my gosh, we're making this movie and it's so cool. And there's something really special about it. So there was just this energy every day that we wanted to be at work all day. Like I've never wanted to not leave, like I've, I've never wanted to get up earlier or like stay later on a set in my life. And I'm like, Let's go. 6 a.m. Great. 4 a.m. Pick me up at 3. I don't care. Like, let's go. Like, we were we were just really excited. And I think something that's so special I want to share with everyone, because I think we always learn from each other on these sets. We always take something away from it when, when you're working with different actors. And George, this was your first lead of a movie, and you absolutely crush it. Uh -oh. and it is... It, you are so good in it. And for someone that's been doing this a long time to work with someone that was newer at it, sometimes when you're in these scenes, you kind of, in these movies for a long time, you kind of forget the magic a little because it becomes like, oh, we're, it's just like, okay, go to work, go to work, 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 work. And sometimes the magic can get lost, right? Because things are going on. And there was the last day of set, we were driving home and oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. Wow. Oh. Yeah, we were, we were driving yeah. the beautiful yeah. sunset. Right. We were driving across the bridge back into Vancouver. And what did you say? You just went, gosh, and you looked at me and what'd you say? I said, we are so lucky. Yes. We're and so that lucky. is so yes. true. And like you saying like, oh, we're so lucky. It just like, I'll never forget like of all the things I'm gonna take away from the holiday sitter. It was like my reminder of how amazing it is what we do and what we get to do and how lucky we are as the actors that get to work on Hallmark Channel, that get to make these movies, that have these fans that are watching right now that absolutely support us and just lift us up every time we make one. And it's because of the people watching at home and the people watching this Facebook. It's, it's the people is why we make these movies. And we are so lucky that we get to do that. So 
I think we had a lot of funny times, but that's the time I'd like to share with everyone. All right, next question. There are many festive moments from going to the Christmas fair, the Christmas lights walk, and making Santa waffles. What do you, George, in real life do for Christmas traditions? Christmas traditions. Well, um, we haven't done it in a few years, but like growing up, we would watch every single year on Christmas Eve, we would watch um, the cartoon Grinch, Miracle on 34th Street, the one from the, like, the 20s or 30s, or no, the 40s. Yeah, I was in that. The Natalie Wood one. <laughs> Were you Natalie Wood? <laughs> I, played, I played the little girl. I was the miracle. <laughs> I was the street. <laughs> um, we would watch, okay, we would watch um, Grinch, a uh, cartoon. We would watch Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, we would watch um, uh, The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. And um, every single year we'd watch those same ones. And then we would read um, the, night be- the Night Before Christmas. Like we had a little golden book. Do you know? mm-hmm. And we, my mom would read those to us. Um, but those were my ones growing up. But, th- but now that I'm grown up, um, we put up Christmas tree early. And um, decorate it and drink eggnog. That's my favorite one as a grown up. But I, I still watch those movies. But and you sing that Christmas song. And I sing what? What was that song? It wasn't Silent Night, but there was a song you would sing at Christmas. Though, it, how did it go? At Christmas time. Yeah, there was a Christmas song you would sing. Oh, I just to get me to sing something. How did it go? Um, oh, oh, in the sky, the stars are bright. Keep going. It is the night of our dear Savior. I mean, you wonder on set, like having George Chrissa, like musical theater genius, just singing Christmas carols. And there's a, there's a moment, I don't want to give anything away, but if you're watching this, this is my plea to you. Please pay attention to the silent night scene with us at the Christmas tree in the house. It is my favorite scene in the entire movie. It is so fun and magical and George sings. And what I love so much, we had, it's, I love these movies are such a collaboration of everyone, right? Like this idea came from a real thing that happened in my family growing up we would turn off all the lights in the house and just leave the Christmas tree on and listen to Silent Night. And that was like this thing. And everything I sit, my character says in that scene is true, like why we would do it and how we would feel. So when you watch it, just pay attention to that scene because it's so special to me. And it was so special to George. And there's some singing in it, but I don't want to give it away. But it's just such a good collaboration when you see it. Um, one of my traditions in our family, a new one that we do is we put these up because these trees right here, hold on, are the Christmas trees that I stole from the art department of Christmas House 2. So these are our new tradition in our house because I live in Palm Springs with my husband and so everything's a little funky. So on set, I was like, oh, those will look really good in my house. And then I just went over and collapsed them when we wrapped and put them in my bag. And they're like, are you taking the Christmas trees? And I was like, yeah, is that is that okay? Like, what are you gonna do, throw them away? And they're like, hold on. And then they talked to someone like, okay, you can have them. But I was literally about to seal these because they look so good. But um, so, so one of my new traditions is putting these up. They're very charming. I, I really like those a lot. I just- I'm, I'm very what? Charming. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Thanks, George. I just watched the Christmas house too. It was on it was on um Stop. How was I? Fantastic. Is that you no know, actually like I hate to give you a compliment, but it was <laughs> just kidding. It was really great. It was really, really sweet and it was really charming. Um and I understand why ask me another question, George. Okay. The movie this movie has Hallmark stars in front and behind the camera. What was it like for us to work with Ali Liebert oh. as our director? And Jonathan, how does it feel to star in and executive produce the holiday set? First of all, let's talk about Ali Liebert. Wonderful. 
wonderful. Wonderful. She, what was so, um, I mean, uh, of the, the many, like, just incredible things about her as a person, but just working with her, I had so much trust in her eye. And like, when she said that we, like, because this was my first lead, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know exactly how things are going to turn out or how it's going to cut together. And like, but just knowing that when she said that we got it, they were like, okay, great. I could, I could really trust that in her. And um, she was like, so like the detail oriented and um, kind and funny and um, welcoming and warm. I mean, like uh, before we even started, she, she called me on the phone and we talked for half an hour just so she could, we could get to know each other a little bit. And um, yeah, she's just such a, such a, a, a dream for me anyways, to work with. No, she was fine. Um, <laughs> she is Ali Liebert. Like you said, with the trust in her, I had so much trust in her with the director because this is such a comedy that Hallmark really hadn't seen from my eyes yet. Um, and the I think the second day I walked in and we were doing a scene where we get to the community center for the play and you and I are like having to act like a team and we're like kind of like an oiled machine of like two dads. And it's like, like, got it, got it. Check mark, check mark. Like we're doing this whole thing. And when I walked in, I was like, okay, so we're gonna keep the camera up here. And you guys are gonna walk in, we're gonna get real close on your face. And then we're gonna hold here. And Jonathan, you just duck out a camera, get the thing, and then just put your hand up with the camera. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're brilliant. And from that moment on, I was like, She's so good and understands comedy so well and understand understood my vision of the of what I wanted this movie to be as an executive producer and it just gelled that moment and the rest of the shoot was just easy sailing because of that. Um and I think what was so fun about Allie is she's a big Mean Girls fan and I think it's fun that you'll notice in our there's like not an homage, but there's a little kind of hint oh. of some mean girlies type, like mean girl type phone calls that happen with like the split screens. And it kind of feels like a little mean girls, the way they're, the way the, the phone calls happen and the, they move. And I thought it was really smart because it's just this little homage. And then we put a nugget in there. We put a nugget in there for the mean girls fans when they watch it that I hope everyone loves and sees as a little kind of nod because you know for me it was really important like i was a different person playing aaron samuels years ago and like here i am playing this character on hallmark channel out and proud with my you know husband uh, or my my real life husband and then to be playing a part where i'm falling in love with jason who's this amazing attractive sweet kind guy on camera it was just like a little um kind of a little full circle moment for me to, to put that in there. So I thought, I thought it was really, it was really cool. And Ali helped come up with all that stuff. So yeah, she's absolutely phenomenal. She doesn't like my physical comedy so much. Um, but I don't know why, cause I, I think it's funny. You know, I, I think, um, I think it's, I think it's good. So I'll just put this over here. Okay. Uh, next question. Here we go, George. This movie is filled with heart and humor as mm -hmm. Sam begins to finally realize how special a family can be. And a big part of that is seeing Jason with his own family. What about, oh, that was an exclamation point. With his own family. Uh -huh. What in this story are we most excited to share? George, what are you most excited to share about the story? I'm, this might be another cop-out answer. I'm so excited to share this story. Like, I'm just so excited for people to get to, to see it. I mean, it means so much to me um, personally. Like, if I was, if I was a, a, a kid nowadays, I would love to see this. Did you say if I was a kid nowadays? Yeah, I'm, I'm not as young as I used to be. Uh-huh, yeah. But, but honestly, if I was, if I was you know, um, back to me. Yeah. A teenager if I was back in because I'm from a very small town in Saskatchewan in Canada and um, if I were to be able to see this on TV um, 
it would just it would really mean it would mean so much to me. So I'm so excited to to share this with people and to give them this story to like to to enjoy on the holidays with their families. Um, because it really is it's so it's such a it's such a family movie. It's about family. It's 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 something you can watch with your family. And so I'm so excited to to share this story and to and to to send it out in the world for people to enjoy. I know. I think back to like what 16 year old Jonathan would think watching this movie, and what it would like what it would mean to 16 year old Jonathan sitting at home with his parents in Ohio, which is where I'm from, and to watch a movie like this with my family, to see a love that looked like mine on camera and on screen, and a, a story being told that felt like what I wanted my story to be. And I think about how much that would have meant to me. And so I am so ready. I am so ready for the world to see the holiday sitter on Hallmark Channel because it's so good and it's filled with so much love and has so much heart and so much humor and everything about it. I cannot speak enough about this movie because I love it that much. And I know everyone's going to love it as much as we do because at the end of the day it's a story with heart and humor and those are the best stories to be told mm -hmm. uh, okay george um um dun, 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 you know what that is george that sound dun, 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 dun. that sound means it's time for our rapid fire questions inspired oh, by the oh, and countdown to christmas all right george are you ready Born ready. Let's do okay, it. flex your biceps if you're ready. Ah! Oh gosh! I'm sweating too much. You're I... sweating, uh, George. Always sweating on set. Here we go. Yeah, it's awful. Attend a tree lighting or a Christmas play. Ooh! Rapid fire, George. Um, um, tree lighting if it's in New York, but Christmas play if I know someone. That's in not it. how this works, George. We just say one of them. There's not a. You just do it. Keep going. Come on. Christmas play. Christmas play. Obviously, George, of course we're going to want to see the play. Tropical Christmas or snowy Christmas? Oh, these are hard. Guys, it doesn't take tropical. much. Okay, it's George. Snowy. 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 Okay, I'll do tropical. Snowball okay. fight or build a snowman? Build a snowman. Snowball fight. Order in or make a meal from scratch? Oh. Gosh, I didn't think that these would be so hard. Oh, I have to answer my life. Jonathan here. Um, <laughs> George Krista, who I love and adore so, so much. He is one of my favorite people. Doesn't understand the concept of rapid fire. So if okay. anyone wants to slide into his DMs and <laughs> through what rapid fire means, it, it'll, it'll help us a lot, okay? okay. Um, order in or make a meal from scratch. Make a meal from scratch. Gosh, thank you. Order in. Decorate stockings or cookies? Cookies. Because I can eat them. Yes, because yeah. you can eat them. I'll go with cookies as well. Sing Christmas songs or cuddle up watching holiday movies like The Holiday Set or December 11th on Hallmark Channel? Um, this is what I actually do. I curl up on the couch watching holiday movies and sing. And one of those songs, just give me another one. Another Christmas song oh, and go. Oh, only night. Keep going. All is calm. All is bright. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Christmas pancakes or Christmas waffles? Oh, waffles. Yeah. Obviously, waffles. Yeah. Angel or star tree topper? Oh, angel. My mom made one like out of a pizza plate like a styrofoam pizza plate when we were little and we still use it it had a little barbie wig and um it was made out of an old dish soap bottle and we still put that on the top of the tree every year I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm my parents yeah, George, your mom made a tree topper with a barbie wig okay well, your mom made it yeah we'll go with that uh you're like and they're like look at her she's fierce she's on the top of the tree let's go <laughs> christmas eve or christmas morning Oh, Christmas morning. No, Christmas Eve. Christmas no, Eve. Christmas morning. Really? Mm -hmm. 
I don't get the concept of rapid fire. I, I can't, these are like, they're two very, very usable answers. George, we have given up on the rapid fire. We're just answering them now. Okay. okay. Sure. I would say um, Christmas morning. Christmas Eve. <laughs> Finally. I mean, our movie is just a disaster. <laughs> yeah. It's this for 90 minutes, people. So if you like this, tune in. If you don't, maybe this movie's not for you. I don't know. Um, but I will say Christmas Eve, because like in the holiday sitter, it's that one night of the year where all is calm and all is bright. We are so excited for everyone to see The Holiday Sitter airing on Hallmark Channel this Sunday night at 8 o'clock. Please tweet along with us. We're going to be tweeting. We need you to please, please use the hashtag The Holiday Sitter. Hashtag The Holiday Sitter. We're going to be tweeting along. I want to hear what you think of the movie because I promise you this is one of the most magical movies we've ever been a part of. And we know you're going to absolutely love it. So watch The Holiday Sitter starring me and George this Sunday night at eight o'clock on Hallmark Channel. George, do you want to say anything? I, I hope you enjoy the movie. We sure did. And we I- We had making it. We, we really enjoyed making it. And I can't wait for you all to get to see it. I think it's going to be really, really special. Okay, say bye, George. Bye, everyone. I said say bye, George. Bye, George. George. <laughs> That's the holiday center.